Welcome back to Slow Living. My name is Esther and I like to sew things that support a slow lifestyle. In this video, I'm going to show you how to sew reusable breast pads as well as a cute little bag that you can use to keep them. If you're unsure what a breast pad is, it's similar to a cotton pad that you would use for removing makeup and that kind of thing, except that you use it when you are breastfeeding to absorb some of the letdown, so some of the excess milk that gets um, released as you are feeding your baby. These are super easy to make and they're a fabulous scrap busting project, so if you have any leftover scraps you'd like to use up, this is such a good project for that. And these make a beautiful handmade gift if you know any friends who are expecting. I ended up making quite a few and gave them out to some of my friends who were expecting and got some lovely feedback from them that they did the trick. I did some quick research for how much these would retail for and I found that for a 10 or 12 pack you would pay anywhere between uh, maybe 20 to 30 Australian dollars. So making these for yourself or for your friend is quite economical in price um, considering the disposable options are single use plastic and therefore not as environmentally friendly and they also will probably add up over time as you need to continue buying them. Okay, so let's get stuck into how to make these things. The ones that I made, I chose to make them about four inches in diameter. Yes, that's diameter, isn't it? <laughs> um, which is about 10 centimeters. These ones that I saw online were eight centimeters and I have seen them slightly larger, so maybe around 12 centimeters. I used a protractor to get a perfect circle shape. However, you can use a bowl or something similar to, to use as a stencil to then cut out all of your pieces. In order to function well, the type of fabric that we use is very important. There are three layers and the first layer, which is closest to the skin, needs to be soft and absorbent because it's sitting against the skin, you don't want to use something harsh, and it's also the first layer to come in contact with any milk, so it has to absorb that milk. Natural fibres have the best absorbency, so my recommendation would be to use cotton or bamboo. So here I've chosen to use a terry toweling, which is that blue one, and then the pink one is a French terry, which you can often see used for tracksuits. Another option is to use cotton flannel, which is commonly used for shirting or pyjamas. The second layer is to add even more absorbency to the breast pad. I chose to use some leftover bamboo batting that I had. Batting is actually the middle layer that you use for quilting. So if you're looking for something similar to use, just mention that in the fabric store and they should know what you're talking about. I would also recommend using a natural fiber such as bamboo or cotton, again, for that increased absorbency. Another good option would be to use, uh, again, cotton terry toweling or simply an old towel. The final layer sits closest to the bra or the clothing on the outside and its job is to stop any leakage coming through and therefore it has to be waterproof. You can find several fabric options in stall that have a PU coating which basically creates that waterproof barrier that you want. Otherwise I used an old mattress protector which had a waterproof coating on one side to prevent any leakages from coming through. Once you have all of your fabrics, it's a matter of cutting them all to size and then we can start to assemble them. Like I said earlier, this is a great project to whip out any um, remnants that you have or any scraps and to use them up. Because I was making some for myself, I even cut some half circle shapes and added a bit of seam allowance to sew these two halves together because I really didn't want to waste any fabric. To begin assembling them, I just popped them into three piles and then I took one of each piece of fabric, making sure that I had the correct sides of the fabric facing outwards and then simply popping a pin through the middle so that I could bulk sew all of them at once. To sew them together, I simply surged all around the outside in a circle. Make sure that you get all three layers of fabric so that it sticks together nicely and doesn't come undone as they go through the wash quite often and you want them to have strength. If you don't have a serger or an overlocker, you can use a domestic sewing machine which has zigzag stitch options. There are several zigzag options, I think most of them would be suitable, but the main thing you're trying to achieve is a really close together skinny zigzag that basically mimics an overlocker stitch. It holds all of the fabric together and it helps to bind in the raw edge so that it doesn't come undone as they go through the wash. If you're unfamiliar with the zigzag stitch on a domestic machine, I did a previous video which walked you through the options for that, so I'll link that up here and also down below. 
And that's really all there is to it. If you are making reusable breast pads or reusable cotton makeup remover pads, um, they are pretty much all done. In the next part of the video, I'm going to show you how to make a cute little bag to store them in. I decided to make these bags with two sections. So with the front section being a regular sort of mesh see-through fabric, and then I used a waterproof fabric for the other section. My thinking was that as you use breast pads and you're out and about, they obviously get wet and are therefore difficult to store. So I thought that if I made two sections with one section being waterproof, you could actually store the used ones in there and then have easy access to some fresh clean ones in the front. If you just like to make a simple bag with one compartment instead of two, you can still follow along and I'll give you instructions for how to do that. Like I said, I used a mesh for layer one for visibility to be able to see the breast pads inside the bag, but you can use any sort of fabric that you fancy. And if you want your bag to only have one single compartment, then you actually don't need layer one at all. So leave it out and just use layers two and three. For my bag, I chose to use the waterproof fabric for layers two and three, but you can use any fabric you like. And once you've selected your fabric, you just need three rectangles of the same size. Only two rectangles if you're just making a single compartment. If you're using a fabric that is going to fray, you want to overlock or serge or zigzag stitch all around the outside of all of your rectangles, and that will stop them from fraying as they go through the wash or as you're using the bags. Next, we're going to stitch down the top part of all three rectangles. This is the part that's going to house the drawstring. So it depends on what type of drawstring you're going to use. My drawstring was very thin, so I only folded down my fabric roughly one centimeter. If your drawstring is thicker, you want to allow a bit more space so that you can thread the drawstring through quite easily and that the bag can open and close with ease. Note that if you're making a two compartment bag like mine, you will need to pass the drawstring through twice in one part. So it's better to leave more room than to not have enough. Then simply fold down each rectangle the same amount and sew straight across the top of all three pieces separately. As you can see, I didn't use a measuring tape or a ruler, but I would suggest that you do so in order to get the same measurement across all three rectangles. Um, and you can also use an iron to iron down your fabric nice and flat before you sew, and you should get a really nice finish that way. Now to construct the bag, place layer two with the right side facing up onto the table, and then place layer one with the right side facing up on top of layer two. Make sure that your pieces are aligned along all the edges and then take your layer three piece and put the right side facing down on top of layer one. That means that the right sides of layer one and the right side of layer three should be facing each other so that when we sew it and flip it out the right way, all of your messy seams will be on the inside of the bag, not the outside. In order to get our drawstring through later on, we cannot sew through those little loops that we created. So instead, we're going to begin our sewing just below those folded bits. I've used this pin to mark where I'm going to begin my stitching, and then I will sew all the way down the side, across the bottom of the bag, and up the other side, and then I will finish sewing again just before I get to those loops. My stitching is embarrassingly wonky and you can also see that my three layers are not exactly the same size. So just learn from my mistakes and make sure that yours are nice and neat and that your stitches are nice and straight in order to get a beautifully finished product. Now you can flip the bag the right way out and we'll get started on the drawstring. I ended up changing to a thicker drawstring because I didn't have enough of the thin one, so it's lucky that I left enough room. You will need approximately double the length across the top of your bag and then add roughly 10 centimeters or so so that you have room to tie a knot. Since my bag has two compartments, I'll need a second drawstring that's the same length. I attached a safety pin to the top of my drawstring and then I started threading it through layer one. Once I was out the other end, I turned back and I threaded it through the middle layer and tied a knot to create the first compartment. 
If your bag only has one compartment, then your bag is finished. However, if you have a second compartment, simply repeat the same process beginning with layer three and then coming out through the middle layer again. I recommend beginning with the same side that you began with the first drawstring, so the two knots that you finished with should be on the same side of the bag. You may have to tweak your drawstrings a little bit so that the knots sit nice and flat on the outer edges. Simply pull them through and readjust them as needed. To be honest, I found that having, true <laughs> having two drawstrings did not function very well, so I would recommend just doing one. So let's rewind back to the beginning of the drawstring um, and instead of going through the middle section we're just going to skip that completely. Enter in through layer one and then come out through layer three. Sorry I don't actually have footage of a single drawstring that's because I made all of my bags with two. They still function well with two. I guess in hindsight if I were to make these bags again I would just do one. Whatever version you chose to create, I hope that it turned out well and that this tutorial was helpful for you. You can find me on Instagram at slow living, that's slow with an E, so tag me if you did complete this project, I would love to see how yours turned out. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye!